So kind of moving from supplements onto kind of diet. Um, so as you said, like diet is really important. And you talked in a paper in like 2014, Neutrobiogerontology. So like the study of getting the diet, I guess getting the diet right for, for aging, right? So do you feel we've got any closer to identifying the ideal diet and, and what would you kind of see that as being? Yes, that's a great question. Um, so since also a very young uh, age, I've been fascinated by what are the best interventions to extend lifespan. And uh, if you delve into the science uh, behind aging, you quickly see that uh, the best interventions relate to diet, of course, uh, to extend lifespan. Actually, uh, one of the oldest uh, older interventions to extend lifespan is caloric restriction, uh, just giving animals less food and they live longer. So uh, that was one insight already in the 1930s that uh, what you eat or how much you eat and when you eat uh, can uh, impact the rate of aging. So I have a very big interest in, in diets for longevity. And indeed, I created a, a novel scientific area, uh, Nutribiogerontology, that uses insights of the aging process to determine what's the best diet for longevity. Because there are hundreds of diets. Mm -hmm. You have paleo diets, keto diets. Uh, you have uh, all kinds of diets. Uh, uh, you can, uh, if, you, if you want, you can follow a diet for each day of the year uh, because there, there are easily more than 300 different diets. And uh, some are very strange and weird, and, and most of them are actually quite unhealthy. Uh, so, uh, so I'm looking into what's the best diet for longevity, uh, ba basing myself on insights into the aging process. And that's very interesting, actually, because the more you know about aging, the better you can assess which foods or diets are healthy, especially in the long term. Because the problem with most diets is that all of them do work in the short term, or most of them. You lose weight, you improve cholesterol levels, you improve insulin sensitivity. But on the long term, you could, you could likely extend, uh, uh, sorry, slow um, or let's say uh, accelerate the aging process. Uh, case in point is, is high protein diets. Uh, um, we uh, high protein diets uh, are still very popular, uh, paleo diets and, and so on, where you have to eat a lot of animal foods. Uh, but we do know that if you look at the signs of aging, we do know that protein accumulation or uh, let's say activation of uh, important pathways uh, that are activated by protein, eh, by amino acids like mTOR, um, uh, yeah, accelerate the aging process. Uh, so if there is one big threat, threat through all aging research is that too much intake, not just sugars, but also of protein uh, can accelerate the aging process. Um, so knowing that a uh, high protein diet is very likely not uh, healthy in the long term, uh, despite if you follow a long, uh, high protein diet, you will lose weight, you feel better, uh, your insulin levels improve and so on. And you say, oh, this is a great diet. But in the long term, uh, it's probably not a good idea. Um, so this is one example of how insights into aging can help us to much better assess uh, the long term effects of, of diets. Um, so. In a nutshell, I, I think um, the best diet for longevity is a diet where you uh, consume less animal protein, uh, so less meat in general and, uh, and cheese and so on and milk. Uh, but uh, if you do eat animal protein, try to replace the red meat, uh, which comes from uh, cows or, or uh, pigs or sheep and so on. So to replace the red meat more with white meat, like poultry or chicken, uh, or replace your uh, red meat more with uh, fatty fish, uh, like uh, salmon, uh, herring, anchovy, sardines, and, and, and so on. So I myself, I almost never eat red meat. I mainly eat uh, chicken and fish. Uh, actually, I eat like four or five times uh, per week uh, fatty fish, uh, mainly uh, mackerel, actually. So it's very easy to, to prepare. Uh, but anyway, uh, so I eat a lot of fish. And... Um, uh, if you do eat fish, uh, make sure ideally it's more smaller fish uh, because there could be some bioaccumulation of toxins in, in, in larger fish. So that's why I, I love sardines, mackerel, and, 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 and now and then some, uh, some salmon. Um, so that's the uh, one thing about longevity diet. So less red meat, more uh, white meat and fatty fish. Um, then a second important thing is, of course, less fast sugars which not just only means less cake and snacks uh, and, uh, and soda and so on, so uh, classical uh, sources of, of sugars, but also means less starches. So less bread, potatoes, pasta, rice, because these products are made of starch. 
and starch is made of glucose. Uh, so it's uh, the long chains of glucose. So if you eat a whole plate of pasta, even whole grain, you still have a lot of uh, intake of sugars, uh, of glucose. Uh, it's released more slowly in the bloodstream, but still it's still a high sugar peak that's elongated for a very long time after you consumed your plate of whole uh, grain pasta. Same with rice, same with bread and so on. So I've seen a lot of patients that say, uh, I want to lose weight. Uh, I'm in my 50s or 40s and, um, and I start to exercise more and I cut out all the sugary foods, but I still don't lose weight. Why? Because you still eat every morning uh, like uh, cereals, uh, which are grains or, or, or bread every morning. Uh, for lunch, they eat a whole plate of pasta, a whole grain pasta, thinking it's like super healthy. And in the evening, you still eat uh, bread and so on. And of course, they don't lose weight because all these starchy foods, the bread, the rice, the pasta, uh, it, it still causes high sugar peaks or uh, let's say protracted sugar peaks in, in the bloodstream and, and that accelerates aging and, uh, and, and so on. So um, I would replace the, the bread, pasta, rice and potatoes uh, with alternatives. And there are three important alternatives for those foods. Um, so legumes, so instead of pasta or potatoes, eat legumes. Um, another source are mushrooms uh, you can use, um, um, or you can use vegetables. Uh, so instead of potato mush, consume broccoli mush. Uh, so, uh, so vegetables are a great way uh, uh, to replace starchy foods. Um, um, so uh, you can also use quinoa and, and so on, but uh, I think uh, uh, more vegetables and um, mushrooms and legumes are great replacements for your potatoes or pasta and so on. So that's the second thing, aspect of a longevity diet. Um, and the third aspect is to consume more healthy fats. Uh, we consume way too little fats uh, in, in, in the US and in Europe. Um, and we need those healthy fats for longevity. They're very important. So that means consuming more olives, more olive oil, more walnuts, more chia seeds, flax seeds, um, and fatty fusion and, and, and dark chocolate and so on. So more healthy fats, uh, that, that's very uh, important too. Um, and that's in a nutshell, a longevity diet. So I would be careful also with more extreme diets like keto and paleo, where one micronutrient gr group is put on a pedestal. Uh, like in paleo diet, you, uh, uh, it's like protein. Uh, you have to eat a lot of protein and they absolutely abhor carbs. I agree with them in, in some ways. It's indeed good to eat less carbs. That's why I say less bread, potatoes, pasta, rice, but they go overboard. It's like super extreme. Uh, they reduce the carbs too much and that can cause actually also stress on the body and, uh, and, and could accelerate aging because you eat so much animal protein, which is not good. Um, and then you have like uh, other diets which, which say you have to consume a lot of fats. I would be careful with that because fats are super interesting. I can talk for hours about that, but in a nutshell, you have to be very careful with fats because the body is very difficult for the body to get rid of fats. It's, it's, it's uh, fat and water don't mix and our body is mainly water. And also, um, so our body has developed very elaborate systems to deal with fats and to process them properly, preventing them from sticking around and causing damage. And actually during aging, we see a huge decline in our fat metabolism. Uh, that's not only why we, when we get older, we get a beer belly and these love handles and so on, but the older you get, the more the fat gets in the wrong places. Uh, so we see uh, normally fat should be under your skin, ideally as uh, subcutaneous fat. But when we get older, the fat starts to accumulate in the liver, uh, in the pancreas, uh, contributing to diabetes. And even when we get very old, it, it accumulates in the blood vessel walls and even in the bone marrow and so on. So um, and you also have to be careful with fats because saturated fats, especially the long changed ones, uh, induce inflammation. Uh, so they can uh, activate white blood cells uh, directly. And that's not ideal. Um, I do think some uh, saturated fats are healthy. Uh, so like uh, butyrate is a saturated fat and it's, it's very healthy and some other fats. But uh, I don't believe like a lot of fat gurus that say all fats are great. Uh, I mean, all saturated fats are healthy. No, it's not that simple because there are some unhealthy saturated fats that trigger inflammation and cause a problem with lipotoxicity in cells. I, I, I urge those, those gurus to Google lipotoxicity and then, uh, then they will perhaps be less adamant about all, trans, uh, all saturated fats are healthy. Um, and I also don't believe governments. A, a lot of governments, they say all saturated fats are unhealthy. 
Uh, no, of course not. There are all, also healthy saturated fats uh, like butyrate, for example. But anyway, it's a very complicated story, but I would be careful uh, with, with, with that. Um, so that, that's a bit in a nutshell, uh, a healthy longevity diet, yeah. Thank you. Actually, it would be great maybe to come back, ha have another talk about fats, because I do find fats very confusing because there's very diametric yeah. views in them and they are complex.